Hey friends, welcome back to another video. For those of you who missed my little announcement um, about these Flashback Fridays, I'm just letting you know that for a couple Fridays here and there, I'm gonna be bringing back some old videos. So if you're looking at the title of this video thinking, did she do another drills video or haven't I seen this before? Yeah, you probably have. But like I said, there are many new subscribers that have missed a bunch of these videos through my catalog of over 700 videos. And Mama is experiencing a little bit of burnout, but I also wanted to keep creating content, bring some of our really great videos back into the forefront of my channel for those who may have missed it, um, just as a way that I can keep myself motivated and keep going without feeling that burnout and without losing my passion for this because I do love this job. I do love everything about it, but it can be a little exhausting coming up with so much and so many different platforms. So for a couple Fridays here and there, we're going to be replaying some of my favorite videos, some of our more popular videos, um, especially for beginners. So let's jump in to another video. Okay, so today we are doing another watercolor drills and practice stroke video. My last one that I did a couple weeks ago was geared more towards painting leaves. And we're gonna be using a lot of the same strokes, but this one is gonna be geared more towards doing loose florals. So for this, I am just using some cheap Canson watercolor paper. I have my Craftimo brush in a size 10 round. So a size, whatever size you have, but just make sure it's a round brush. And then my Winsor Newton professional watercolors and my water and paper towel and we're ready to go. Okay, so these strokes are things that you can practice to make your florals better. <laughs> Let's kick it up a notch. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna wet our brush. You're gonna pick whatever color you want. I'm just gonna grab some purpley blue, whatever I have here. And the first drill that we're gonna be doing is using the tip of our brush and light pressure to create small little kind of swirls. And this is the center of a rose. So the first one I want you to practice is just using the tip and light pressure. So that should look something like this. So I don't want you to consistently go over it like a circle, not like this. I want little circular, kind of like the letter C strokes, just all around, leaving some white space in between and just messily going around. So let's just do that here. Okay, light pressure. You can even do like a circle motion and then just lift your brush off every so often so you get those little dips. Okay, and it just makes it nice and rough and loose. So that's one you can practice and just keep going around and around. And you want those white spaces in between to not be super, super far apart. You don't wanna be doing this. You don't want these big white spaces. You want them to be nice and close. Okay, and even some of the lines overlapping, overlapping each other. Okay, see the difference? So that is the first practice stroke. Okay, the second one is similar, but we're adding a bit more pressure with our brush to get thicker lines. So I'll just show you on this scrap paper. Okay, so you're just gonna be doing bigger, thicker lines, pressing, pressing a little bit more, but not with full pressure. You're not going all the way with full pressure. You're just giving it a little bit more. Curve lines all the way around. And the purpose of this and the one thing that you really have to remember is not leaving big amounts of white space. So again, I don't wanna see, you don't want this big arch. You don't want like these big arches. You want a nice kind of flat curve, okay? Not big arches where you have all this white space. It's not gonna look right. You want little bits of white space, flatter curves, Okay, they can touch each other, they can overlap a bit. Just using a bit more, a bit more pressure. Okay, so let's do another one. 
Okay, so I'm using a bit more pressure. See how these lines are a bit more, they're a bit thicker. Okay, because then we're gonna be adding the small lines in the center to the thicker lines, and then our last stroke is gonna be the thickest. Okay, so another thing you can practice, which we did in the um, leaves video, is using light pressure with your brush and just creating lines, practicing those light pressure thin lines and then do slightly thicker with a bit more pressure. And then lastly, you can do heavy pressure to get those thick lines, okay? And so the last drill for this flower, which is the rose, I just want you to practice some thicker lines, curves, just going around, just getting that motion with our brush. Okay, really press down. So light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. You wanna get these nice big curves. Okay, and then once you put them all together, this is what it should look like. Now remember, it kind of looks like this on this paper because it doesn't take the watercolor pigment as well on smoother paper. Okay, so once we put it all together, let me just grab a bit more paint. You're gonna start off with those thin, oops, thin little lines like we did here. Going around and then gradually thickening up the lines. See that arch that's a bit too high? I'm just gonna fill that in a bit, a bit thicker. And then lastly, those nice big thick petals. And that will give you a nice rose. And see, there's not a lot of white space. There's white space, but not big arches of white space. Okay, so those are the three drills that you can practice to do the rows. Okay, and then this is also, this can also be for a ranunculus too. You won't add the big, big petals around the edge. It will just be step one and then step two. And it'll be more like a ranunculus. Okay, so that is our first one. Our second one is gonna give us a petal shape, which is good for lots of different flowers. I usually use it for either a peony or maybe an anemone. Um, but it's fairly easy. So I'm just going to grab some pink just to change it up here. And what you're going to do is you're going to use your, the tip of your brush and light pressure, just kind of like, um, how we create leaves and you're going to go light pressure to get that nice tip. And then you're going to go down a heavy pressure and then light pressure come up. Okay. So it kind of looks like it's a leaf, but it can be a petal too. Then I will do again, light pressure heavy pressure, light pressure. And there you have a petal shape. You can just move the paint around just so it doesn't dry at different rates. Okay, so you can practice that again. Again, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Do it side by side, leave a little bit white space in between, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Now look at the edge of my petal. Sometimes I like it rounded depending on what flower it is. Sometimes I like it jagged like this and then I'll just fill this in. And it gives a nice little look to the petal. It makes it look a bit more like organic. Okay, again, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Let's do one with three to make it a thicker petal. Again, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. And then again, this one, we're going to kind of curve underneath. So it comes back like that and you have a thicker petal. Okay. So you're kind of doing this like C curve. Everything is made up kind of like of C curves and S curves, like we learned in our last video. And that's a thicker petal. And again, I like when the edges are like that, um, but you could always round them out if you needed to. Sometimes I like to leave a little bit of white space in the petal as well. So let's do it again. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, light pressure. I'm gonna go and leave a little bit of white space, a little white line like that. So it looks like there's a bit of a highlight in the center. 
like that. And again, you can make it another bigger petal if you want. Okay, but kind of lifting up to that light pressure at the end is going to make this jaggedy kind of line. So a leaf is more light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. And I really kind of drag it out at the end to make that kind of pointed tip. But when I do the petals, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, I lift it up faster to get that jagged kind of rounded edge. Okay, and that's kind of the difference. But just play around with it, doing this drill over and over again to kind of get a feeling of how you want your petals to look. So that is one part of the flower. And then all you'll be doing when you're doing an anemone or whatever kind of flower you're doing, um, you're just going to be doing this petal all the way around. And if you need to turn your paper, you definitely can. I'll show you again down here. The second stroke for this flower, if it's in a different perspective, um, is the bottom kind of curved petal that you don't really fully see. So for this one, you're going to be doing the same light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, but you're going to do kind of like a flattened out U curve. So it's a C on its side. Okay. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Okay. And you can fatten it up a bit again if you want. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Okay. Like that. We'll do one more. And I kind of curve it up. I lift my paintbrush off quickly so I can get those kind of like jagged, like natural lines. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Like that. Okay, and now I'm going to put all of these together to show you the flower. So I'm going to kind of make it look more like an, an, oh, an anemone. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do one of these petals. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. There's one. Okay, I'm gonna do another one to this side. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Okay, there's two. And we always touch just a little bit. And see how the edge of the petals, they aren't all the same? That makes it look a bit more loose and again, like organic and natural. Okay, so we have three petals here. Um, if we want it to be like looking at the perspective from the top down, we'll do the same petals all the way around. But if we want it like it's kind of like a tilted flower with a different perspective, that's when this stroke comes in. Okay, so maybe I'll do one more. Again, it's messy. And then you're gonna do this U stroke like that. So it looks like it's kind of on its side, okay? And then sometimes I'll take my brush and I'll just do these little kind of spiky parts coming in like that. And then you can always add a bit more pigment right in the middle to get that nice um, bleed and that shadow look, okay? So another way you can use this petal for an, a peony, I have to think what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna do this kind of petal again. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use this petal. I'm gonna do that light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, okay? Kind of coming up at the end. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. There's one petal. Let's do another one to the side here. Maybe a bit smaller. Really kind of curve it in. They're kind of like leaves. And then I'm gonna do another one, a small one over here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna be doing some C curves around. Like that, maybe some light little lines there. Okay, grab a little bit of yellow, do some dots, and there's our peony. Okay, very, very loose, but there's our peony. And you could always add a leaf or something coming from the bottom here. Okay, just using that kind of stroke. Okay, um, so we have our rose, ranunculus, anemone, peony. Um, now let's talk about smaller flowers, maybe like daisies or sunflower petals. So I'm just gonna grab some yellow 
And again, it's the same kind of stroke, light, heavy, light. But instead of doing two strokes here, you're gonna do just one to get the smaller, longer petals. So again, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Just drag it out a little bit longer. And we have kind of like daisy petals, black eyed Susans, um, sunflowers. Okay, and then also practice going different ways. So curve it this way, curve it that way, because then once you put them all together, they'll look again a bit more organic, like it's right out of nature. You don't want them all straight going the same way. So like say there's like a center here of a flower and you're just going like this. You don't want it straight. You want them to be curving. It just looks a bit more natural. Okay, so practice that curve while you're painting. So light pressure, heavy pressure, curve it a bit, curve it the other way, up. Just gives it a natural kind of look to it. Now this is more of a pointed tip. If you wanted to make it a bit more round, you can go light pressure, heavy pressure, and then again, a short kind of bringing it up. When you elongate that stroke, you get a pointier tip. So light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, you keep going, it gives you that pointy tip. But if you want to cut it short and have that more blunt tip, light pressure, heavy pressure, then right up and it gives you a rounder tip. Okay. Just trying to darken it a bit so you can see them a bit more. Okay, remember if you're using cheaper paper, you're gonna to wanna to go back over it just so it all dries at the same rate. Okay, you could also do the two strokes. So just try not using, so just try not to use too much pressure. So you can make them a little bit thinner if you're doing smaller petals. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. A little bit smaller. Okay, and again, really try and get them to move. It's like an S curve. Okay, then once you wanna actually do a flower, you can move it around in a circle. You can have them more bunched together. So sometimes I like to go with my one color, give them a little space. And then with a different color, a different yellow, I'll go in between. Again, giving it that movement. Like that, okay? Something like that. Grab a little bit of brown and let it bleed into those petals. Okay. Then we're gonna do a really, really simple stroke. And this is for smaller flowers like lavender or lilacs, um, one that's kind of connected to a stem of some sort. So I'm just gonna grab some purple. And this one, you're just gonna be using the tip of your brush. And you're really just using the shape of your brush. So you're just gonna do kind of like an upside down teardrop and you're just dabbing your brush with that teardrop or that point pointing down. Okay, let's wash some of that pigment off. You're really just dabbing your brush. You can stagger it. It's like one of the easiest practice drills and strokes. Okay, and you don't want it uniform, like one, two, three, four. I mean, you can but it doesn't look as natural. So have some in the middle, have some off to the side. And then if you'd like, you can grab your smaller brush and you can just kind of connect it all down the middle too. So it looks like there's a stem. You can grab a little bit of green or whatever. All right, and then as you go down, you can make them a little bit bigger just by giving a bit more pressure. like that. Okay, so that's that stroke. And then another one I want to show you, which is super easy, kind of messy, um, 
effortless looking, but might require a bit of effort, <laughs> is these messy, short, kind of rounded petals. So I'm just going to add a bit of blue to change it up a bit. Okay. And really all you're doing is kind of like this scribble. Scribble back and forth like that. You can add a little dot in the middle. This is great for if you're doing like a bouquet of like hydrangeas or something and you put them all close together. Um, just like cute little flowers. You're just doing like a, almost like a square. And you're just doing five in the center. You could always get like a darker pigment and have it bleed. <laughs> whatever you want, but it's like one of the simplest little strokes you could do. And really all you're doing is this, but in a circle, okay? I kind of use this for delphiniums, um, like I said, hydrangeas. Um, you just add a little bit of a, a dot in the middle and that's it, super, super easy. Okay, and then the last one, I'm just gonna show you when you're doing the stroke, I want you to practice color bleeds because this is something I use in all of my um, loose florals and it can be tricky to know how much water and paint to use. And also it's a little bit tricky on cheaper paper. I'll, I'll show you here. So I'm going to grab some pink here and you're going to do one of your petals. This is what I like to use for like buds. So again, you're just doing kind of like light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, but it's you know, you're not dragging it out. So it has that blunt end and we're just creating kind of like this circle petal for a bud. Okay. And as you see, it's quite, it's pooling quite a bit. We want it wet, but we don't want it where it's pooling like that. And that's because of the paper. So I'm going to dry off my brush and I'm going to pick up some of that pigment. There we go. Okay. So it's wet, but it's not sopping wet. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of green. So I'm just going to grab some sap green. And you don't want a lot of water on your brush. You want pigment, but not a lot of water. And you're going to do a little stem. And all you're going to do is you're going to touch the bottom to get a little color bleed. Now I'm going to show you what's going to happen if your bud is pooling and there's just too much water, okay? This is the trouble you're going to run to into as a beginner, which is why it's a great drill to practice. Okay, so here's my petal. As you can see, it's really watery. I'm going to grab some of my green, okay? I don't have a lot of water on my brush, but I have some pigment, but there's a lot of water right there. Look what happens when I try to touch the bottom. It pools with it, okay? You want this nice color bleed, you don't want to pool. The other trouble you can run into, let me do another bud. Okay, so maybe you've kind of cleaned up that pool. It's not pooling, it's just nice and wet, but it's not a little pooling area. But when you go back in, you have too much water on your brush, okay? And you try and do your little stem and it takes over because you had too much water on your brush and it added a pool there, okay? This is where water control comes in. I have a bunch of videos on this, but ultimately what you want, like we did in the first one, is a bud here. And if you're unsure if it's pooling or not, tilt your paper to the side. See the little pool in one area? See how that green just like all went to one area? This, it just stayed put. You Right here, you can see there's a pool. So I'm gonna dry off my brush and I'm just gonna mop it up with my dry brush. Okay, once there's no pool and it's not dry, it's still wet. If you're unsure if it's wet, tilt it towards the light. If you can see a little shine on it, you'll know it's still wet. That's what you want for your base grab your green. Sometimes it's easier to do if you have a smaller brush because a smaller brush picks up less water. You can always pick up the pigment, dab it on your paper towel just to get some of the extra water off. Then do your little, your little stem and just touch it for a second, okay? And let it bleed. And then you can do your little leaves around your bud. Okay, that's another really good drill to practice. And that's about it. Those are all the main strokes that I use when I'm doing my loose florals. And it's just something you have to practice over and over and over again. So again, 
with your roses, your ranunculus, try not to leave so much white space. You really do not want these big arches of white space in there. Um, with these, you know, just it depends on how you remove your brush. And again, with cheaper paper, when you do lift it up, you're going to want to go over the petal again just to distribute that water evenly over the petal, especially with like cheap, cheap paper. Because as you can see, if I'm doing this light pressure, heavy pressure, you get a pool right here and it looks a little dry here. That happens mostly with cheaper paper. And especially when you do the light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, you drag all that water to one side, it's gonna dry at different rates and you're gonna get kind of funky marks. So just go back over it. Okay, try and get the all of the same amount of wetness. Again, if you have too much water on your paper, dry your brush off on your paper towel just a little bit. And again, just move it around and you won't get those weird marks. And then for these ones, again, just work with the movement of your brush. Try going different ways. This is not a great example of what it would look like. I do have um, better tutorials of how to do like sunflowers and daisies and all that stuff. This was not a great example. Um, but just working on that movement of your thinner petals. This one, the point is always kind of pointing down to get that point towards the center. This one is probably one of the easiest those little, you know, you're kind of tilting your brush on the side and you're just making these kind of rough squares. And then the lastly, with the water control, creating those little buds and that's about it. So now like in our drills that we did for our leaves, I'm just gonna show you how I would incorporate all of these strokes into a painting.
Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you again soon. Bye.